Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, the podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Welcome to this week's episode of Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle. As you have noticed, my hair is a different length. I got a whole bunch of it cut off and donated to Children's with Hair Loss um, a couple weeks ago. So this is the new look for the new year. Since I am now Mrs. Longmont 2024, I will get new banners and stuff. But um, I'm looking forward to serving again this year and seeing where that goes and continuing the podcast. Today, we are talking about the Longmont Food Rescue, and we have Naomi here, and um, we just want to talk about, like, who are you and what is um, the Longmont Food Rescue, and just a quick little overview. Sure. Hi, I'm Naomi Kurland. I am the Executive Director for Longmont Food Rescue. Um, We are a small nonprofit operating in Longmont and surrounding communities. We Uh, Our mission is to take food that might otherwise go to waste and uh, bring it to where people need it, uh, people facing insecurity right here in Longmont. So what that looks like is we rescue food from grocery stores, farmers markets, individual farms, and uh, convenience stores, and bring it to, you know, uh, low-income housing sites. We work with uh, homeless outreach centers. We also work with other service providers like mental health partners, recovery cafe, basically places where people might already be receiving services or where they're living um, so that it brings the food to the people. Um, One of our core foundational uh, values is to remove any barriers to access or stigma around receiving food services. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also host some uh, public open distributions so where anyone can come and get food and we really just try to make it easy for people who need healthy, fresh, nutritious food to get it in our community. Awesome. That sounds so good and all around. Um, Can you give us just a little bit of a background about your organization? Sure. Uh, So we were founded in 2017. And since then, you know, we've just grown every year in terms of our programming, our reach, the type of food we're able to get and the communities we can uh, connect with. Um, you know, started with farmer's market rescues. That's very seasonal. We still do those. And uh, started branching out, you know, to grocery stores and convenience stores. Like I said, those convenience stores, they have grab-and-go food, which is really, really nice for our unhoused community. So things like prepackaged sandwiches, salads, mm. and, and all of that. So we've been able to kind of just expand the types of services we can provide in response to what we see as a need in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we work with new partners, new other uh, nonprofit partners that are doing other service work in the community, as well as housing sites and talking to community members, taking surveys of our community, finding out what type of food people need, where they need it, we're able to then grow and expand and respond to that by identifying what kind of food we can get donated and brought to those sites. Um, so yeah. and. I was brought in on in actually spring of 2020. I was hired. Um, so it happened to be my first week was the week that everything locked down. <laughs> so we changed our service model a lot that year. We just saw a huge need uh, increase. People who had never received services before or not in a needed while all of a sudden needed mm-hmm. it in, in addition to the existing need mm-hmm. that we were seeing in our community. Um, so, you know, we just started really trying to grow that year, um, increasing how many public distribution how many sites we worked with on the residential side. And since then, you know, even as we've come back to in-person hangouts and work and all of that, we've seen the long-term need. And so, you know, kind of the trajectory since 2017 has been this slow, steady growth. But really from 2020 on, it kind of exploded in response to what we were seeing in the community. So, um, yeah, we continue to grow and try new programs. We've uh, got a new program called Longmont Community Fridges that was launched last year. And that's to just even more try to bring food into the community, create hubs for people who might be working multiple jobs, have kids, childcare, all sorts of things that can 
overlap with most service hours for pan food pantries mm -hmm. and food banks. Right. And so how are you going to try to fit that in your day if they're just open, you know, Monday through Friday during work hours, exactly. right? Exactly, work and school hours. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, to have s a lot of our services, we try to focus on weekends, off hours, and now with these fridges, they're the first 24-7 accessible food access hubs in Longmont. So at any time, someone could drop by and see if there's food in the fridge and pantry. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, okay, now what? Oh, what are we doing for dinner? You know, mm -hmm, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. let's just go to the fridge and find out if there's something there. So that's incredible. Is there any sign up or anything for that? Or is that just kind of open? That is totally open. And so, like I said earlier, the fun, one of our foundational um, goals is to really any barriers to access, any red tape, any paperwork, we try to get rid of that because we figure if people are trying to find food resources in our community, they probably they need, need it. it. It's, yeah. not, it's not something that we need to gatekeep or need to make harder to get. And so these fridges, they're like the little free libraries, I right? I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's not about, you know, anyone needing to fill something out or get access to them. And that's why we try to place them in places that are accessible 24 hours a day, outdoors, um, at different hubs. One's at a hospital, Longmont United Hospital. Mm. One is at Agape Safe Haven, which is a Good. homeless outreach program. Mm -hmm. And one is at a uh, a church, heart of Longmont Church, and so we're and we're going to continue to grow this program. It's just uh, just under a year old right now, right. so we've got three sites so far and looking to expand. But um, we're looking at places, like I said, where people might already be getting a service, stopping through, and could use those fresh food resources. Sometimes it's hard to ask for more, mm, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's hard to say, "Hey, I need I need help this week with groceries," yeah. um, so that. Even that tears down that barrier also. Yeah, the internal stigma that, that feeling. Guilt or that yeah. whatever feeling that they might be having. So that's that's incredible. That's an incredible idea. I oh, love that. Thank you. Yeah, that can be a really big barrier, especially mm -hmm. if it's like, yeah, maybe you haven't sought food services before or you have and it didn't work out well mm -hmm. or you didn't qualify or something Just about Barely qualified. Yeah, or <laughs> filling out the paperwork, you kind of stopped halfway through and yeah. felt some sort of yeah. internal barrier there. Mm -hmm. This is just saying, you know, the food is there. Come get it if you need it. We and all need to eat. Yeah, <laughs> and especially with the fridges, there's not even anyone there. We maintain them. We check in on food quality. We mm -hmm. check on, on um, you know, if things need to be cleaned out, if there's fridge maintenance. So we do have volunteers that come by to check in on the fridges during the week. But Otherwise, they're just open community resources. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So um, what is your focus at the Longmont Food Rescue? My personal focus or a general <laughs> sure, focus? Yes. <laughs> Both. <laughs> so as executive director, I am really about program development and um, finding these opportunities, making these relationships, the connections. I really love finding affiliated organizations mm -hmm. that where we can, you know, become uh, more valuable than the sum of our parts. You know, have a greater impact because we're working together. Oh, you're speaking to my heart. <laughs> That's exactly what this is about. <laughs> yeah, so I really kind of trying to foster relationships, mm -hmm. not just with food donors and the recipient sites, but other nonprofits who are doing similar work. So we're not reinventing the wheel or overlapping services. We're working together to increase services. Mm -hmm. um, we work uh, for the Community Fridge Program. That is actually a collaboration with Uproot Colorado, and they are a nonprofit that does gleaning. So that means they go to farms, and there's a practice where farms will grow more than what they're going to sell because you might have blights. You want to just have extra. There might be food that just doesn't, won't sell on the shelf Not or whatever. Not pretty enough. Exactly. It's ugly. And so stuff gets left in the fields mm -hmm. that won't get harvested. And so Uproot comes. They pick what won't get harvested or pick up that kind of excess that has been harvested but can't go to market. And then they bring it to organizations like ours that get it out into the community. And so this fridge program was a collaboration with them because especially during harvest season, there's – an excess, which is wonderful, but we want to make sure that it can get out to people. And if there's not an open food bank or there's not a distribution happening that day, we wanted to have cold storage that's accessible to the community whenever they need it. And yes. so that came out of that partnership. So that's just one example of a collaboration where we're able to do more because we're working with others. So that's one of the things I personally in my job get very passionate about is being able to um, reach more people with these community partners. That's fantastic. 
So what's the the organization focus? The okay, organization <laughs> focus. So I would say that Longmont Food Rescues, our focus is twofold. It is reducing food waste mm -hmm. and feeding people. So it's hunger relief, and it's also looking at the fact that we have such a bounty. We have more food so incredibly blessed than what that we, we even understand can sell and consume <laughs> right. on a commercial level mm -hmm. so like like i mentioned with uproot in the fields that's one area you know mm -hmm. just at the point of creation and then all through the chain of distribution transport there can be waste along the way all the way up until the consumer gets it at the store and then you know food waste that you don't actually eat what you buy so there's this whole chain of where food waste can happen mm -hmm. and we try to find different opportunities along that chain of like well if that food could go directly to where someone needs it could it be eaten that day maybe it's a little more perishable maybe it needs to be eaten that week but for people who are living paycheck to paycheck or week to week, who are struggling to keep nutritious food on their table, that's such a boon to say, here, here's some food you can eat now. Right. Like, here you go. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's making sure that those resources that we already have don't go into a landfill where they're mm -hmm. going to create methane gas. So there's an environmental aspect to, to that food waste component that if it get, goes into a landfill, it creates methane. It's really bad for greenhouse gases, much more powerful greenhouse gas than CO2. So keeping it out of the landfill, putting it into people's Fridges, feeding the community. stomachs, yeah, exactly, <laughs> um, strengthening our community, <laughs> uh, and so, and then, then you get into that second part of the mission, which is the hunger relief, and really identifying, you know, where are people facing food and nutrition insecurity. We mm -hmm. do try to focus on this nutritionally dense food, fresh produce. Um, when we do have additional purchasing power through grants, we will supplement what we're donated with high quality proteins, nutrient dense proteins, because that is often requested and harder for people to find. Yes. So really trying to address what are the nutritional needs because hunger relief is one thing and right. food insecurity is one thing, but then- You can fill. Yeah, you can fill with a lot, but it but can not. be, um, yeah, kind of empty food mm -hmm. that isn't supporting the health of people who need that health support the most oftentimes, exactly. who are already maybe challenged with health concerns. We work with a lot of um, senior living uh centers, apartment complexes, low income, people who are living on a fixed income, and they might already be dealing with disability, other sorts of um, illness and aging where they really need that nutritionally dense food. They mm -hmm. really need food that's going to support their health so they can live their fullest lives. Right. Um, and so we do try to prioritize that when we have a donation that maybe we couldn't like completely you know, get out into the community or like, you know, fill a car or fill a vehicle and we're like, okay, we're going to run out of room. We're going to always prioritize what's fresh, what's healthy, what's nutritious, what's, you know, going to really supplement as opposed to, you know, um, some things that might be cheaper but less nutritious. Right. Just filler. Yeah. <laughs> now I have a, yeah, I'm, I'm all about nutrition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so who are you trying to reach with the organization? So with our programs, um, we really are looking at where, where the need mm -hmm. is in the community um, and like I said, there is some uh, partnerships that are more residential, finding low-income uh, housing sites. We work with Longmont Housing Authority to identify. We work with Elder Share Program to identify where are people seeking food resources and we can bring it directly to where people live. We also work with um, like the homeless outreach programs I mentioned, um, mental health partners and Recovery Cafe. And then Youth Center, mm -hmm. Longmont Youth Center and YMCA Preschool to reach families and youth. And then with those public distributions, it's really inviting in anyone who feels that they are needing these resources and are having a hard time, you know, doing – if you're paying for – Housing and electricity, utilities, fuel. child care, fuel, oh my gosh, all fuel. Of the other yes. things that oftentimes there's not a way to get free resources around or support. Yes. If it's a choice between keeping the lights on and putting food on the table, like, can we help you put food on the table? Um, those are the people we're trying to reach. For, and, uh, you know, we work with just a huge variety of people. Um, as far as our volunteer side of things and who we reach there, um, anyone who's passionate about food, who's passionate about hunger relief, who cares about the environment, there's so many 
things about our organization that could appeal to a volunteer. Right. And so um, if any of what we do aligns with your passions, we would love to have you on board. Absolutely. What makes the work of the Longmont Food Rescue different than other similar serving organizations? The fridge thing, obviously, <laughs> is a huge thing. That's fantastic. Yeah, that, that's a new program. And like I said, that was in response to the, the question or concern that would come up around the timing mm -hmm. of when a lot of other service providers are open and in operation um, and even when we bring food to where people live or when we do the public food distributions, those are still at set times, right. set days of the week. Um, the main thing, though, that I think we do that is a little different from other organizations working Longmont is look at that removal of barrier to mm -hmm. access, see how can we make it easiest for people to get these resources and not have to fill out paperwork, not have to show proof of need or proof of residency or proof, proof, proof that you're somehow qualifying for these services right. because there is enough food to feed our whole community. There, there is food out there if we can get the resources together, can do the rescue transportation and distribution. Those are the bigger barriers than right. the actual resources. And so there's no benefit in trying to hold on and, you know, like hoard I said, gate, hoard, gate <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to, to hold on to this because it's going to spoil if yeah. we do that. You know, if it's, it's the faster a, it's out, the more people come, the better it is. Yeah. Yes. If it's in a storage, if it's in a warehouse mm -hmm. somewhere. And I think that the larger organizations, the ones that might have paperwork or other um, constraints, a lot of that is due to their funding models. Um, federal funding models often almost always require certain mm -hmm. reporting metrics that require them to take data about who's right. receiving their services to fill out paperwork to show that they are qualifying for benefits or that they are residents of Longmont because that's what some of their funders require. Right. So I very much empathize with those nonprofits that have to work under that model, but I do know it. It's talking to our clients, talking to our recipients, how much of a barrier that can be mm -hmm. for so many people, um, whether they even qualify, but even if they would qualify going there, getting there, having that internal feeling of whether, oh, do I really want to show up it's to recorded. this place? It's recorded yes. that I needed help, which should, in in today's society, is not okay that we need help. And, mm -hmm. I, and I want you people to see it's okay to mm -hmm. need help. We all need help. We were on food stamps. We were going to the community food. We were going to the food banks and stuff for mm -hmm. a while just because with my health and stuff and trying to raise kids and my husband's working and it just wasn't enough. And yeah, it was it. And, and there is a bit of shame and there shouldn't be. And so I want to bring to light that, you know, just because you might need help, it's okay. It's okay to need help sometimes. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't shame anybody else and we shouldn't, we shouldn't look down on that it, it, and we want to help each other. And I think that's what makes a community strong is that you, you want to help other people. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So at our public distributions, the only question we will ask is how many people you're feeding so that we can see how much food we have and try to give an emo appropriate amount for your household. Um, we often have people picking up from multiple households because mm -hmm. they're picking up they for someone drive. who can't drive. Yeah. Someone, you know, lots of folks who come from, um, those, those senior residential sites where people are disabled, who might not have access to a vehicle, mm -hmm. picking up for their neighbor, um, we see that a lot. So by not asking anything more than how many people they're trying to feed, that, that really opens doors to people feeling comfortable and empowers them too to be sharing the resources. Right. It makes me so happy when I hear about our recipients who are bringing an extra bag for their neighbor and tell me a story about how, oh, this, you know, last week this totally fed our whole, you know, apartment complex right. basically, right. you know, like yeah. this, this got spread around. That's always just what we want to see is this ongoing sharing of resources, the idea of it being a community resource, a community asset. Um, and I think that sharing model, that kind of gifting model is, it, it is an abundance model. It's where you start 
seeing people sharing and then they want to share more. Mm -hmm. We've had so many people who came to us as recipients who then became volunteers, who got so excited about what we were doing and felt the impact of what we were doing and said, how can I get more involved? How right. can I help? And I think a lot of that is due to our model and how it is a little different in, in that we're just trying to get the food out into the community. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So what are the greatest needs that you guys face at Longmont Food Rescue? I think it's similar to probably most small nonprofits. So yes, the two greatest mm -hmm. needs are volunteers mm -hmm. and funding. Yes. Um, we we have an amazing active volunteer base. We are a very small nonprofit still. We have two part-time employees, myself included, currently. <laughs> okay. We're looking to expand, but building up resources for staff time takes funding. Mm -hmm. And so currently um, we're majority, vast majority volunteer run organization. We have a volunteer board who's very active and like between 45 and 50 really active volunteers on a monthly basis. Um, but we can always use more support on the volunteer department. Absolutely. You know, if you wanted to get involved, we have food rescue opportunities. We also have those on-site distributions. So if you like working with the community or being there when people are um, accessing food, there's opportunities for that. Our fridges have volunteers that check on their maintenance. Um, the farmer's market shift is one that is just this time of year gets really busy. So we have, uh, we've got a lot of food at the farmer's market that could be rescued. And mm -hmm. so the more volunteers we have on a Saturday to help us pick that up, the better. Mm. Um, and as far as the funding goes, I know that's just nonprofit world, right? You're always trying to get funding. Yeah. Um, and for us, you know, our, our funding model is a mix of grants and foundation funding, but really the heart and soul of it is those local donations, those individual donors, because that's where you build relationships, you get that sustainable funding. You're not constantly applying for different grant cycles and hoping that this time they're going to fund you. It's right. it's the people see the value of what we're doing in the community and say, yeah, I want to invest in this program sticking around. Yeah. So always the, the top two. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I wish I would have won the lottery that that one point what five billion dollars <laughs> and I could be able to, man man would we be able to strengthen the community with that? Mm. Do you have any events coming up or volunteer opportunities? Yes. So um, in addition to the farmers market rescue, which as I mentioned could use volunteers in the in the summertime, especially this time of summer when it's really going. Um, that's on Saturdays. Uh, it's a great way to hang out at the market and then pick up food and bring it somewhere that could really use it. Uh, we also have pop-up produce distributions, and that is also in partnership with Uproot Colorado, where they glean at the at the farms and bring a lot of extra produce to um, the Longmont United Hospital parking lot, one of those hubs that has one of our fridges at it, too. So um, those are once a month in the summer. So we've got one coming up um, August 18th. I don't know if this is going to be out. Probably later than that. <laughs> so we'll also have one in September. Um, and so there's volunteer opportunities to help with those pop-up uh, distributions, those events, um, to help with bagging the food and distributing it. Um, and then we we just have ongoing volunteer opportunities for if you whether you like picking up food and bringing it, doing that rescue component, or whether you want to be part of these on-site distributions. Other volunteer opportunities, you know, we do some events like fundraising events or, you know, just kind of community events. And we have opportunities to get involved if you're really into our programs, if you really want to be part of the community fridges. Um, we sometimes host paint-a-thons when it's time for painting or refurbishing a fridge. So uh, if you stay tuned to our social media, you can find out about that. We often have uh, local artists who help design what's going to be painted on the fridges. I've seen. They're very pretty. Yeah. yeah they're fun. Things. Yeah. Um, so we've had artists from Firehouse Art Center design some, and then we had, uh, had an independent artist that's uh, living in the Boulder County area do another. And so there's ways to get involved with lots of the, our programs. So if you find one that you're really like, oh, I really care about this or, you know, um, opportunities with anything else you might think is a valuable skill you could you could offer. So for example, one of our board members who used to be a volunteer and then joined our board, she is uh, a 
website designer mm. and she's working on a new website design for that, us right that now. That back of house stuff is important. Yeah, also, yeah. so I yes. mean we're, we're excited to launch a new website in the, in the next few months so awesome. um, that's all thanks to a volunteer who got really passionate about it and wanted to get more involved. Mm. So um, definitely the food rescue, the pop-up uh, distributions, those are kind of immediate on the ground, come help us at the farmer's market this Saturday um, but for more long term if you really want to get involved with our mission and our organization there's opportunities for that too awesome how can people contact and find out more about longmont food rescue of course i'll have everything on my qr code they'll be there um and then in the show notes and everything you'll find it on facebook and my facebook and instagram so but yeah how do you get all this information <laughs> that she's gonna share with you will be there of course as you know <laughs> well i'll make it easy for you it's our website is longmontfoodrescue.org and so all of our contact information is also there um if you want to send us an email and don't want to go to longmontfoodrescue.org you can just do info at longmontfoodrescue.org perfect very straightforward on social media we're on on Facebook, Longmont Food Rescue, um, and on Instagram, Longmont Food Rescue. So it's Fantastic. all very easy. Um, I will say that our Longmont Community Fridges program, we have a separate website for that just because it has a nice landing page where you can look at a map and see where our fridges are located. And as we add more locations, they'll pop up on the map. So that one is longmontcommunityfridges.org. And we also have an Instagram for that, this Longmont Community Fridges. So we're pretty easy to find. If you just did a Google search, that would all come up too. That's pretty much how I found you guys, probably. Yeah. <laughs> this is community food or community in Longmont. And you find all <laughs> kinds of stuff. It's fantastic. Um, it's wonderful. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add to the conversation? Maybe I forgot or you just feel passionate that you want to talk about for just a couple minutes? Um, I am just really grateful for this opportunity. I'm so happy to get our message, our programs, our mission out to the greater Longmont community. Um, we have noticed um, increased needs. So you would think that maybe 2020 was going to be the height of it, but actually, no. yeah, we've seen annual increase in people mm -hmm. seeking our services. Um, I believe we had 15% increase between 2021 and 2022 in people seeking our services. So that was just like the last two years from this that year to this year we're seeing similar trends so just helping get the word out both about what we do but then supporting what we do whether that's volunteering whether that's donating however you can if you have food resources that you want to donate if you have time if if there's a connection that you think would be useful to us that we might not already have we want to better serve the community that's our overall you know driving force is how can we get more food to where people need it and that's how we approach all our program areas like what can we do to make this easier for everyone and reach more people have a greater impact so if anything that i spoke about today resonates with you inspires you if you have an idea if you're excited please reach out um, and we're also out at community events we're not just at the farmer's market every saturday you can come say hi to us but we also are going to be at art walk on september 9th we'll mm -hmm. have a booth set up with anima arts working on that fridge program so we'll be talking about the community fridges there you come say hi to us if you see us tabling ever um, please connect and please connect online you know find us and we're share we're, we're, share pictures yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah reshare what we're doing you, you never know what you sharing somebody else's picture that who is that who who's gonna see that mm. and then be like oh you know what i know somebody that could use that or maybe i could use that mm. or it, it just those, those those seeds are planted mm. and um you know oh you know i really that's a really good idea or you know and um so it the more you share, and I know everything is share, 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 mm -hmm. and, and it's true though that that couple of seconds in front of people, it it spreads so much information and can help. It can help so many people, and um, so yeah, just to I'm I'm so thankful that we we finally got to connect mm -hmm. to to be on here, so that way I could I can um, put this out and hopefully and hopefully connect more people to things that they need and and things that they want to be involved with. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being on today. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you to my guests, my listeners, and my supporters. Serving together, we can strengthen our community. Please like and subscribe. Do all those other things. You know you got to do them. Because that's the easiest way that you can serve 
right now. All right, now go, connect with others, and be a blessing.